about how to read a crochet pattern. The written instructions will be on my blog. If you need any help with crochet stitches, check out my how-to videos on my YouTube channel. I'll leave that link below. I remember when I first started crocheting about four years ago and I thought that I would never be able to read a crochet pattern. I would look at a crochet pattern and I would think, how does anybody read a crochet pattern? They look like they didn't make any sense to me at all. But as time went on, I learned more about crochet and the patterns started to make sense to me. Now I can speak fluently in the language of crochet patterns and I'm going to try my best to break it down so that it makes some sense to y'all. Let's get started. Let's look at a sample pattern. This is one of my patterns. It's my take of the very popular messy bun hat. It's a free pattern and I'll put that link below. Normally there will be a title page first, like this one, then there might be another page or two of pictures. I'm going to scroll through the pictures and get to the first informational page. On this page, or it may be multiple pages, you will find everything you need to get started. This section will have everything that the pattern designer thinks that you need to know to crochet their pattern. For this example, the pattern designer included materials, gauge, size, and abbreviations. So for this project, you would need all of these materials. A size H crochet hook, medium 4 yarn. The yarn weight is always on the label of the yarn. For a full chart on yarn weights, you can go to the Craft Yarn Council's website. I'll put that link below. You will also need scissors, a darning needle, and measuring tape. There are some optional things as well. Embroidery thread, an embroidery needle, and a puff ball maker. Next is the gauge. This tells you how many stitches should be in a certain measurement. This one tells you that six stitches should equal two inches and three and a half rows should equal two inches. To make sure that your stitch gauge is correct, you can crochet a swatch to make sure. Next is the size. This tells you that the size of the finished project should fit a small adult or anyone with a 20 to 22 inch head circumference. Next is the abbreviations. The pattern designer will list all of the abbreviations that they have used in their pattern. These are the abbreviations that are used in this pattern. I will go over some common abbreviations in a minute. After this section, there may be a section of special stitches, instructions, or tips. This pattern does not have one. After the informational page is the pattern. It looks kind of like a different language, doesn't it? Well, patterns are made up of abbreviations and instructions. Once you learn the basic abbreviations, it starts to make sense. All patterns will have an abbreviation section to explain the abbreviations that they have used. For a list of abbreviations, you can visit the Craft Yarn Council. I'll put that link below. Here are some common abbreviations. CH means to chain. SLST means slip stitch. SC means single crochet. HDC means half double crochet. DC means double crochet, MC means main color, CC means contrasting color, SC2TOG means to single crochet two stitches together, ST means stitch, and SP means space. Again, for more abbreviations, you can visit the Craft Yarn Council's website and I'll have that link below. Let's look at another pattern. This pattern is for my Pokeball inspired hat. It's a free pattern and I'll put that link below. Let's skip on to the information section. It has materials, gauge, size, and abbreviations, and some special instructions. Let's look at the abbreviations and special instructions. It tells us the abbreviations for chain, single crochet, and double crochet, and it tells us how to do a double crochet increase and a color change. Now the pattern. Let's break down a couple of rows and then we can try an exercise. To begin this pattern, it says to start with red. Round one says to start by making a loose slip knot or a magic circle or whatever method that you prefer. After that, chain two. Now the pattern tells us 
that the chain two does not count as a double crochet here and throughout the pattern. This means that anytime there is a chain two, you do not count it as a double crochet. Now the pattern says to put 12 double crochets into your loose slip knot or whatever beginning method that you preferred. And now the pattern says to slip stitch to the first double crochet of the round. Remember that the chain two does not count as a double crochet. This round should equal 12. That means that there should be 12 stitches in total. It's always a good idea to count your stitches and make sure you have the correct number. Now round two, it says to chain two. Now it says to put two double crochets into the same stitch as the chain two and in each stitch around. Now you can slip stitch to the first double crochet of the round, remembering that the chain two does not count as the first double crochet. At the end of this round, it should equal 24 stitches. Again, it's a great idea to count your stitches and make sure you have the correct number. Okay, now let's try a little pattern. This is my kitty cat applique and it's a free pattern on my blog. I'll put that link below. Now let's look at the information section. These are the materials needed. A crochet hook, yarn, scissors, darning needle, and a needle to sew the applique on to whatever you want. It does not specify yarn or hook size because it is an applique and you can play around with different size hooks and yarn to get the size applique that you would like. It does say down here that if you use this size crochet hook and yarn that it will come out to this size applique. So if you use Karen Simply Soft with a size G 4mm crochet hook, it should be about 2.5 inches tall and 2.25 inches at the widest point. The abbreviations that are used in this pattern are CH for chain, SLST for slip stitch, SD for single crochet, HDC for half double crochet, DC for double crochet, and TC for triple crochet. Let's get started. Here's the pattern. First, it says to make a loose slip knot. Make sure that it is loose because you will be working into it later. Now it says to chain 12. Now put a triple crochet into the fifth chain from the hook. One, two, three, four, five. If you have any problems with any of these stitches, I have crochet tutorials. I'll have the links below. Put a triple crochet into the next chain. Put a double crochet into the next two chains. These are the two chains that we will be working in. Half double crochet into the next two chains. Single crochet into the next two chains. Working into the loose slip knot, put two single crochets.
chain three. Put two single crochets into the loose slip knot that we've been working in. Chain three. Put two single crochets into the loose slip knot that we've been working in. Slip stitch to the first chain and pull on the tail ends to close the hole. You may want to do this before the slip stitch. Now you can cut the yarn and weave in the ends. Now for the kitty cat tail, you can make a slip knot and chain 20. Most patterns will not tell you to make the slip knot, it is implied. Slip stitch to the bottom of the cat body. Cut the yarn leaving a tail long enough to sew the body and the tail to the hat or whatever you are sewing your applique to. To sew the applique to whatever you would like, start by sewing around the body first and then the tail, positioning the tail as you go. I've already sewed my applique on, but if you are going to sew an applique to a hat or another material, lay it on your hat, sew around this way and down and then position your tail and sew the tail on. And here is my kitty cat applique that I've sewed on to my hat. I hope this video tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, you can comment below or you can email me at withalexofficial at gmail.com. I really want to help y'all understand how to read crochet patterns. And if I've missed anything, please email me or comment below and I'll try to include it in my next video. If you need more help, you can go to the Craft Yarn Council's website. They have a great article on how to read a crochet pattern. I'll leave that link below. If you like this video, please give it a huge thumbs up and if you would like, you can share it too. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe now so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks a bunch. I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. Until next time, bye! Look. Oh, it's recording now? It was supposed to have been recording. Oh. Today I'm going to talk about how to read a crochet pattern. Wait, this is on. Hello. 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 Gotta be as quiet as possible. Okay. But I have a question. Is Goonies a band? <laughs> <laughs> and if I've missed anything, please e email. And if I've missed it, if you need more help, you can go to... Is it still recording? Yeah. Okay. Meow. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's a wrap!